You are now tuned in to Minutes with God Community Network With your host Ricky Lopez Bringing some interesting interviews And always keeping it about Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior Hey Ricky Hey Ricky Hey Ricky Minutes with God Minutes with God Minutes with God All right Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to the Let's Talk About It show. This is the Minutes with God Community Network interview. I got my little bro in here, Roman Rhymes, in the house. And um, it's it's crazy. It's like a full circle kind of day because, bro, when you were younger, I like you basically used to sleep on your couch. Yeah, it was crazy. All right, <laughs> let me play your video games, your GameCube. Y'all would just be like, yo, just don't touch anything. Play the game. I'm like, okay, cool. Yeah, so you guys do your own thing. Nothing, you know. I Sometimes I'd be drunk. If I was on the run or something, you know what I mean? When I was having... Uh, tough, tough times and stuff. You know, his mom's dad let me sleep on the couch. And yeah, she was never tripping about that. Yeah, you guys were always good kids. I mean, not even well. You guys, we did what we did in the streets. In the streets, you know what I mean. But my mom always thought you were a great kid. My nana loved you. Yeah, you're her favorite. So yeah, so it's cool. So you, your big brother and I, we was, we were real close and stuff. So shout out to to big bro out there if you're watching. And uh, so we're gonna kick off this interview. So I don't do a lot of secular interviews type of things. You know. I'm a Christian after prison. Some things happened in my life, and uh, I decided to go a different way. But, uh, but I'm just excited just to to see your life and how you you know you're a young entrepreneur, bro. You're doing things. I'm trying, yeah, yeah I'm trying. Thank you for having me. I'm really trying. I'm trying to do something completely different. Like, yeah, I went to prison. Not not as long as you, but yeah. I went to prison, and I felt like I needed some type of change also. Because when you get out, you obviously want to just stray right back to what you're gonna like. I mean, you're used to. We're all. We're all used to habits. Everyone has a habit. We're all uh, just products of our environment. So everyone, it's easy when you get out to just jump right back into something. When when I got out, I was like, dude, what can I do? I was, and then it, it, evidently, I ended up having a bunch of friends that like did construction and worked on cars. So that's how I came about with everything else. Yeah. I was like, I need to do something legitimate like them when I got out. Yeah. This is great. Talking about jumping back out. You know, when I when I got out, it, you know, I was a Christian and I was scared to talk to people again because. Um, I didn't want certain kind of influences to come in my life and to detour me. And I, I didn't feel like I was a strong enough person to go back to a neighborhood and um, have an angry episode or have some kind of episode that would make me want to just uh, flip and set trip mm-hmm. and stuff like yeah. that. But when I went back to uh, reach out to, to, to see your brother again and things like that, and I, I told him I was a Christian and stuff, man, it was the craziest thing ever because he went through a tragic situation. The same thing. And he became a Christian, yeah. and he was like hardcore. He yeah. was like running, running yeah. with all was, these things. So yeah. that tripped me out, like that, that whole full circle. It was, it was, it was completely crazy. Yeah, it was crazy because I was always asking about you, and my brother's like, because he fell out with a lot of friends, you know what I mean? A lot of friends, they go their own way, do their own things, but he was, I remember you used to always call the house, you know what I mean? And I would accept the calls, we would talk. And I'm like, you still talk to him? He's like, yeah, man, he's my bro. And then at his wedding, when I seen you, I was like, I was like, damn, man, I was like, that's what's up. I was like, Ricky, he's actually, I was like, he's changed. He turned around. I was like, damn, he's clean. I was like, that's, I was like, not like dope boy fresh. I was like, damn, that's crazy. I was like, he's super, he's a man now. I said, that's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. That was a trip. So yeah, that that threw me away too, to just to hear what happened to your brother and that radical change and to actually sit down face to face and in person and to hear. God definitely changed him and you guys for the better. I could say that like, um. Yeah, he's super happy all the time now. He's like, oh, he's, he's a much better person now. Yeah. He's not always blowing up for no reason. He's yeah, yeah. Taught a lot, taught him a lot of patience, and now he has two beautiful children. You know what I mean, yeah. two beautiful boys and a wife, and yeah, man yeah. of God, it's pretty cool. You know, it's it's crazy, but because uh, I feel kind of guilty, because I feel like because uh, you got your other brother in here too, I feel like we kind of we had to have some bad influence on you guys. Oh yeah, no, you most know? definitely. I remember. So I kind of feel guilty about nah, some hey, things. Yeah, but it's I learned from you guys. I didn't. A lot of my friends ended up dead because they didn't have older brothers and guys like you. Know, I mean, you guys taught us bad sometimes, but you also taught us how to. Do, I don't want to say how to do bad properly, but how to do bad and not get yourself killed. Obviously, like um and. You guys always taught us how to own up to your situations. If you're, if we're gonna be out there acting like this and that, don't be trying to half step and uh, accept your consequences how they come. You know what I mean? So yeah, yeah. eventually, we'll yeah, and that was our thinking. You know, and, and uh, that was our thinking back then. You know, and of course something happened and our thinking has changed and mm-hmm. stuff. But man, let, let's get to you a little bit. Let's talk a little bit about you. So okay. you're a young entrepreneur. I see you got this uh, this business. Uh, you're on your grind. It's uh, yeah. inter- underdog. It's called it? Underdog Enterprise LLC, and it's literally just it's a group of me and all my friends. Um, we do paint and body work. So and, and so we're car customization specialists. So what we do is say we could literally just we could swap an engine for you, or we could just paint the car for you. We could detail the car for you. We could do your tint. 
It doesn't really matter. Or what, uh, a lot of times what I really like to do, um, say somebody has like a dream car. All right, say an old man, he wants um, a 1953 Chevy Bel Air. Okay. All right, and he wants it to have a system and he wants it to be painted a specific color and he also wants us to, uh, to say, like, shape the fins a certain way. Okay. All right, then I bring in three different, I bring my guy, uh, my mechanic, obviously, his name is Hector, and then I'll bring in Price, who works in, um, what is it, audio, all right, and what we would do is we would find that price at an auction or anywhere here in America. Um, you could use IAA, you could use Copart, you could use, um, there's many different auctions, all right, and you could find that car at a price, all right, so say, that, say their budget is 10 grand, all right, mm -hmm. Obviously, that's not going to be that well, all right? So we're going to try and tell them 15 grand. We find we can find the car for like six grand, all right? We customize it to what they want, to their specifications. Uh, um, and then after that, we, we just tax, let's say, um, 20%, okay? So off of like a, or like 25%. So let's just say like off of a $10,000 deal, you see what I'm saying? We, we made $2,500 and we put someone in the car that they wanted. Yeah, yeah. And they're able to show their friends what they got and word the mouth and it just grows eventually. Yeah, so you're really looking for the interest of the customer. Yeah, we're trying I like to, that. I don't like driving, because when I was younger, people were like, it's a car, car's a car, car's a car, and I understand that. Everything's a stepping stone in life. I try to choose right. everything as a stepping stone. Don't try to say, oh, well, the car's a car. No, don't ride it out till it breaks. Use it as a stepping stone. Try to sell it, save that money, work a little bit harder, get more money, and then use it as a stepping stone to your next, you see what I'm saying? It gets you to your job to get your money, all right? It's a stepping stone. Everything's yeah. a stepping stone, even if it's a job that you don't want. Uh, let's just say uh, you want to be, let's say you want to be the executive, uh, the VP of, um, like, let's just say IHOP, yeah, all right? Yeah. You, you want to start as a manager at a regular branch, all right, or at a, someone's franchise, all right? Start off as a manager, that way you can show them you could actually run the facility, all right, which someone's entrusting you with. And then after that, let's just say, boom, the, the senior VP gets fired or the VP gets fired. Yeah, yeah. Boom, there's your opportunity. Now you can put in the application and now you can show them that you're actually ready and you mean business. Yeah. So everything's a stepping stone in life, I feel. Roman rhymes, young mindset. I love that kind of mindset. Yeah. I was thinking about the future, you know, how we can get planted and get out of yeah. certain situations. You don't know, like the that. Lord's going to take you whenever you want it. And I mean, whenever he wants, he's going to take you. But at the same time, I, I feel like if he blessed you with another day, bro, you better, you better plan for the next day. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because yeah. you that's, never know. That's, that's good, man. That's good. I like that mindset. Um, so... You also have this other thing, you know, you, you, you're venturing out into the hemp world. Oh, yeah. So my wife, yeah. So my wife, like, she needs, um, she gets, like, these really bad headaches. All right. So she gets these really bad headaches, and um, they're like migraines. So rather than us, get, like, just flooding her system with a bunch of, like, you know what I'm saying, over-the-counter drugs or narcotics or, you know what I'm saying, trying to get, like, Percocets or anything like that, anything, or Excedrins, um, I started using, like, topical creams. We started using edibles and... There are medicinal purposes for it. Like it actually, and she doesn't believe in smoking. She won't smoke or anything like that. But if you give her like a topical cream, or like um, what is it? Oh, cannabis butter. So I said I made her some cannabis butter. I guess. So my friends had a bunch of uh, hemp plants, and what we did was well, not hemp plants. They were actually they were marijuana plants. But um, it was within the legal parameters. They just gave me some cannabis butter, and I made her some um, rice krispie treats with them. And her headaches went completely away, so yeah. now we don't even have to waste. So you're promoting some of the properties in hemp. Yes, there's yes. a lot of pharmaceutical places yes. right now that, that promote a lot of properties. I'm, I remember it was a shame shame conversation. It was like you don't talk about it. You know, you just do it and you just shut up. And, exactly. You know, you don't, your business you don't is your business. Yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't. Yeah, but it's it's all over the world now. It's all it's all over. It's everywhere. Yeah. You just it's it's unavoidable. It's, it's it's in your face when you go to any convenience store, any wherever you go. It's it's, it's just a multi million there. dollar bro, company. I, I, I want to know about this picture over here about this uh you holding this plant looking like it just came out of jumanji oh man what's up with this okay, experimentation so i we started um so what we want to do is we're we're going to yeah we, we we're going to start selling clones and seeds we, um we obviously have to go through you're in the experiment we're in the experiment yeah we're in this exactly we're and trying to grow becoming and an flourish. llc yes we're going to become an llc and what we're going to try and do is get a distributor's license um that way we could you could actually do that yes or we could uh, or we might end up just getting a caregiver's license is where you um you harbor and take care of other people's plants for them um and, and at a certain stage when they're ready you you give it to them and they pay you for taking care of their plants yeah yeah. okay the state also pays you yeah. so um and we're going to use that to well further fund um whatever we want to do whatever right? want yeah to whatever do. we want to do yeah. say like because i want to go back to like school you know what i mean i want to be able to pay for my own school or something like that so we're trying to do it all completely legitimate that way, I don't. It doesn't bite me in the butt later. 
Right, yeah, do everything smart. Do everything. I, I, see yeah. what you, I see what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people don't do it that way. A lot of people just go out there and they're selling it pounds. So, they're like, so you know, so good to you if you do it uh, the, the the right way. You yeah, know, everything the right way, everything proportional. You know, popular. Everything in moderation, man. Yeah, <clears throat> moderation. That's a big. That's a big word for your generation. Yeah, you cannot be greedy. I learned. I don't think people do things in moderation in your generation. They do not, and they do not do it out of good faith. They don't. Yeah. A lot of people want, they have ulterior motives, you know what I mean, and hidden agendas, so you got to watch who you're messing with nowadays, especially yeah. in this city. That we're yeah, in. I, think, I think that's a real conversation is that um, if you had something to share with the, the generation that's rising up right now, you got, like for instance, me being older than you and you seeing what you saw, yeah. like so what would you tell the younger you, you know, uh, like I like that word moderation, I think that's what would I tell myself, I would have told myself, what would I tell myself if I was younger, I would tell myself to slow down, think before you say everything, pay attention to what other people are saying, and uh, try, people like to live day to day, all right, like I understand that and people try to, uh, I'm just living day by day, I'm just going through the motions, that got me into a lot of trouble, you know what I mean? And don't, it got me into a lot of trouble because I was, uh, I was always reacting too quickly. If I would, if I would, impulsive. If, yeah, it's super impulsive. And if I, if I was able, I was very sporadic. So if I was able to tell myself something today, I would tell him to slow down, think. Yeah. Everything's gonna fall, everything's gonna fall in, 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 in you know what I mean, in order, everything. Maybe there's some panic, some anxiety. Like, oh yeah, I gotta get it. I gotta get I it, gotta get it, it or else I'm gonna. Yeah, I mean, I don't want it. My friend just died, so now you know what I mean. That, it's gonna be gone tomorrow. It's gonna be exactly. Yeah, I mean, so my like it, it would suck. Like, oh, my friend just died. Am I gonna be next? What am I gonna do? Is my friends gonna be safe? Is my my family gonna be all right? What about my kid? What about my brothers? What's gonna happen to them? Yeah, I gotta get everything now. So I gotta get everything now. But that's how, just like um, decisions made out of anger, that leads you to be in a bad situation. Right, don't right. be sporadic. Think. Try to find it the most legitimate way. Try to get it the most legitimate way because I'm telling you, there's been times where I was like, oh, we made it to our destination back when I used to do things. And I was told, hey, for a little bit more money, would you take him here? And I ended up getting arrested and it was the word yeah. I should have. I should have. Well, I, I think that's what the devil does. Hey, just for a little bit just more. Just a little bit more. Just and a little uh, bit he more. got yeah. me and he got yeah, me. Yeah. And unfortunately, I took a couple people down with me. Yeah. Yeah. Because well, we were all involved not, in some things. You're not the first, but it, yeah. it does happen. And, you know, that's the cost of that street life. And, and that's why I'm like, I don't want anything to do with it anymore. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it's good stuff, man. But that's a good conversation. I think people need to hear that kind of mindset. So they I think do, that's man. important. Yeah. Um, so, so moderation. Man, I'm, I'm kind of stuck on that right now. Everything in moderation, man. Man, how many... Man, I wasn't doing anything in moderation. I told myself I was like, "Oh, you think my, my drinking when my drinking had started?" I was like, "Man, just a little moderation." Yeah, everybody. But what, what do you do when you get that drink that kicks you in the butt thirty minutes later? Yeah, and then it's no more moderation. Now you just and now you're out, just you know? give me another one and another one and another one. Some people so like when you go like to like a rehab or something like that or to like Sonora. There's a lot of mental health facilities that they give you a mental health evaluation all right and they also give you a substance abuse evaluation to see what if you're a moderate user if you're a frequent user or you see what i'm saying um and a lot of people don't really think that they aren't that they think that they're a moderate user you know what i'm saying um, yeah, yeah. so like they say a glass of wine a day you know what i mean that's actually it is in moderation but it kind of isn't because Three drinks in a month is mo in, in moderation. It's it's a moderation to um, what they know as to be normal. Exactly With, around their environment. Yeah, so they're judging the situation by their environment. Based off who they're drinking right. with and how so much they drink. This is in, this is in moderation to the environment that I live in. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where you know a lot of people uh, get mix, confused. Yeah, they yeah. get it gets super misconstrued. It gets misconstrued. Yeah, yeah. Like people so don't just depending on the pocket of environment that you grow up in. You know your definition is going to change on exactly things. so i think that's important so if you're too. living in the hood and everybody's sipping 40s uh you know what i mean you see people your uncle he drinks i drink 140 that's moderation that's moderation that's one yeah, a day I like bro that you know what I mean? get it. yeah so and so that's super important because when jesus gets to uh the topic of moderation exactly it's just like yeah. your moderation and his moderation are two different things it's like your definition of good and his definition of good completely two mm -hmm. different things his definition comes from a heavenly place your definition comes from a broken land exactly and so and it's, 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 it's one sucks. of those things of understanding growth and you got to be able to think those things you got to pay attention growth. exactly you got to yeah. pay attention to what's happening around you because you'll see 
that's one thing, like my brother, um, and that's what trips me out because you changed so much, and my brother also, uh, also, he used to always tell me, like, man, do you know what all your OGs and all your friends and all my friends, the people that you call your big homies, are going to be 10 years from now? I'm like, what? They're gonna, like, he told me they're going to be with the same girl, all right, who's <coughs> constantly cheating on them, all right? They're going to have kids. They're all going to uh, end up having kids with each other's babies, mamas, stupid stuff like that. They're going to have to deal with each other's stuff, all right? Yeah. They're going to be sipping 40s still at their mother's house. All right, and half of them aren't even gonna have a car. He's he's like, but they want to be real gangsters. They're gonna be real. They're gonna be big. He's like, and a lot of you guys' friends are real, like straight, like straight. You know what I mean? But some of them did turn out to be like that. Like I didn't, and I was like, nah, man. And some of them actually did, but they didn't take it in moderation. They didn't take everything in moderation, and they were just living their life day by day. Yeah. So they weren't planning for the future, and eventually they just got stuck in a big old loop. Yeah. yeah, we were talking about some of the people that passed away. You were just, you were putting me on game right now. And I was like, what? That person passed away? Yeah. All right. I was just like, what? So it's, like, it's, it's crazy. But yeah. think, if you really think about it, um, it's, it's real. It's, it's, it's that real. It's sad. So, you know, let's hit off, uh, let's hit off another question here. Um, what I got here. So tell me, tell me a little bit about your philosophy of life. Like what's, you know, I have it written down here. Uh, basically, what's life about? Like, how would you define life? How would you describe life in a, in, a, in, a, in a short way? I think it's about family. I honestly think life is about family. Whether you have a family now or you lost your family, all right? I think it's about family. And family doesn't necessarily have to be blood. It could be friends. You see what I'm saying? If, say, your whole... Because I know a lot of people whose whole family disowned them completely, all right? And their yeah. friends brought them in, let them stay, gave them a plate. You see what I'm saying? hooked him up with a lady and now he has his own beauty, he had a son, now they have their own beautiful, he has his own family, even though he doesn't speak to his original family. Oh, perfect thought before I forget it. Um, you know how some people say blood's thicker than water? Yes. But sometimes, could you disagree? What do you say about the, uh, the, the mother who's about to adopt someone that's not even their blood? That's a different kind of love. That is a different kind of love. Because so it's like, I, I think it's just on the individual's goodness of their heart. It is. Or, so I mean, a lot of people try to call people like that suckers, but at the same time, wouldn't you, if you were in that position, wouldn't you want to be adopted? Yeah, yeah. So, so you know, I think, um, I think we got to be careful because I think growing up in the streets, I think we've we've said a lot of that stuff. Oh, blood's thicker than water. The homie's mm -hmm. life, this and that. No, because they could. It's crazy because anyone could cross you, but yeah. yeah, anybody can cross you. So yeah. you, it's it's important to to see who your real friends are, whether you're broke yeah. or you're rich yeah. or not. Because to me, everything's about I care about providing for my family, and yeah. I consider my friends my family. But I always oh. make sure that. I'm good first, so I could take care of my wife, so I could take care of my, she can help take care of my daughter, so that I don't have to worry about that, and then I can take care of my mother and my brother and do my you, friends and so forth. Do you like the term extended family? Yes. I like that term. I believe in that. Yeah. I, I believe in extended family. I, I felt like you guys were extended family to me growing up. Yeah, yeah. Because we always, I, I Well, call, you break I, bread. I call, I call your mom Thea. Yeah, yeah. If you're it, breaking bread with somebody. Related. Exactly. If you're sleeping, lounging, eating with somebody, yeah. sharing anything with somebody on a personal level, <laughs> That's personal. You, that's personal. You're, you're a family. I consider you family. If I allow you to come in, because you know those type of people like, hey, man, just, uh, yeah, I'm going to run inside real quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right? Those, and those are the type of people, unfortunately, if you can't trust a man to walk into your home, you shouldn't even show him your home. All mm -hmm. right? That's not family. There you go. There you go. So. Yeah. So you got some other, some other qualities about you, and I, I still, do you feel like you're young and wild sometimes? Yeah. Yeah, okay. I think that's, 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 that's most definitely, honest, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I still try so, to, I still need to learn how to think a little bit before I speak. Yeah, yeah. So you have um, this gift, you have this talent, and uh, your voice is unique when you do it. Mm. And so you, you're you, also you. in the, the rap genre area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to, I like rapping, yes. So, when I was younger or whatever, when I, when I was going through my stuff or whatever, my appeal, I was paying her with Ill illegitimate money. And she was constantly asking me, how am I getting this money? And um, I had no answer for her. Right. So my friends were like, just tell her you're a rapper. And I was like, I am not a rapper, bro. And they're like, you could rap though, bro. You could do it. You, 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 rap, you meet the part. You, you know what I mean? They're like, you, you're not lying about anything. And I was like, oh, whatever. I, was like, I wouldn't even know how to start. And they're like, oh, your friend Price and your friend Cuete, they, they do that. I'm like, okay. So I was like, but how do I monetize that? They're like, they'll show you, they'll show you how to sell. So I started paying her in iTunes money and stuff like that. Okay. And um, eventually 
I guess I just started running with I threw like three, four songs out there just to get a couple hundred just so I could pay her. What's the most views you got on YouTube? Cause... 14 or 15,000 views. Yeah, because I was looking like when I found out because your brother had told me. It might even be at 20 now. I, I didn't know. even, this was, this was, a, you were real young on yeah, this Yeah, this one was I think my second song ever. But let me so this is you when I was doing this is right before this I went to prison this is right before I went to prison I was doing okay. everything I, was, I think I was 21 I had just turned 21 so yeah I was just about to have my daughter right after this at 22 and this is the mindset you were about Living yeah, fun. I'm gonna do. Yeah, I'm gonna. I was gonna do whatever I had to to get where I had to get really quick, and uh, it got me in a really bad, really bad place really quick. I don't regret it, but if I would have done some things differently, then uh, I think I think you got flow and style. I think I, I think it's just for the wrong team, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you got some flow and style there. Um, so you know, you you already know I'm gonna hit you up on some gospel stuff. Yeah, exactly. I rather sing more than anything because I tell people they don't play gangster rap. They don't play gangster rap in churches, buddy, or at school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Kind of see, style, kind of style. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of style is this. I like, I like uh, it's R&B. Yeah, like your voice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your voice is very distinct. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your I actually wrote this song for my wife. Did you? It does sound like a slow jam, but it also sounds, yeah. You know. Love you, baby. Yeah, you got cherries, Sam. Yeah, you got cherries, Sam. Can't ignore this feeling. I can't ignore these feelings tonight. And girl, I know it's hard because we always fight. But if we just hold on, I'm sure we'll get it right. That's crazy. I haven't heard that song in a very long this time. Is, this is for the, uh, how old are you this one? I think I was younger actually. I was probably like uh, 19, 19 or 20, because I started when I was 18, 18 or 19. So this was kind of like during a time where you, you were young, looking for fun, you still had, you know, you still want that emotional connection. You wanted everything. I was like, trying to find my way. Yeah, changing. I didn't know what I was doing. Yeah, I, yeah. So. I, I think that's a cool conversation because I think this is the kind of interview that you do now and then you revisit this interview five or ten years later and then you're just like, man, remember that? I'm probably going to look at this video the same way I'm looking at these videos. Like, it's crazy. Because you're looking at these. I'm like, I'm wow. I'm like, I'm, I would dress completely different. I, I, yeah. Right, that's right. Crazy. So, so I think that's good. But so anyway, so you got this this wonderful gift and, and I, I love to see you, you know, hit, hit, some, hit some good things out positive and so let's let's talk about the influence of music a little bit. What what's your thoughts on on the influence of music for the generation? Oh man, so that's a big conversation. No, right? yeah, it's a big conversation. Nobody wants to be doctors anymore. Nobody wants to be teachers anymore. Nobody wants to be. It's crazy. Architects. Nobody. Everybody wants to be a singer, an influencer. Everybody wants to be a rapper. There need to be normal people in the world to keep the world, to keep normal society going. You guys got to understand that there got to be people at the post office. How are you going to get your mail? All right. Yeah, and everybody, yeah. and it sucks because the, let's just say there are large corporations and I'm not a conspiracy theorist and stuff like that, but let's just say that there are corporations with ulterior motives. All right. That fund certain programs and things and rappers and, and musicians to say certain things and to wear certain things to influence certain people. Ergo, the younger generation because if I'm sitting here just talking to you like this you're not gonna listen to me but if I play a dope song all right, right. you're gonna listen to it why because it has a catchy beat right um, they're not gonna sit here and listen to me spilled just like I used to I'm like whatever old timer I'm mm -hmm. out dog all right so if you if you actually play a song for them now you know, right, with a positive message they'll they'll think positively if you 
You know what I mean? I, but I don't. I'm not gonna blame it on the music. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I can't. You can't just blame. That's 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 like when people said. Uh, what is it? People were listening to. It's Bone just Thugs. a tool. Yeah. People yeah. like remember they try to say people were listening to Bone Dugs and Harmony and Brother Lynch and Pac when they were killing people. Yeah, so yeah. they try to say that their music did it. No. People make their own decisions. Guns don't kill people. People kill people. Right. But right. at the same time, it still influences people. Yeah. It still. You know what I mean? It still puts a thought in your head. But I think music is different, a different kind of tool mm -hmm. than, than a it, gun. It should and be positive. Because I don't think a gun makes you dance or sing. I don't think a gun sings to you. Mm -mm. But music does. There's something about the vibe of music. There's something about... I was listening to a Jada Kiss uh, interview with... Uh, I forget the, the group's name and stuff, but... Uh, one of the guys ventured off and he made a bold statement. He said, he says, the genre of music, of rap music, uh, really runs the world in some ways. Mm -hmm. And I thought about that and then he, he gave his definition of why. He said, because think about it, football people listen to music, rap half music. Halftime, yeah, halftime um, too. Uh, there's all kinds of people. He says, he says doctors, he says you, you're NBA players. He says normal moms and dads listen to rap music. So he was he was crediting the rap industry um, as 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 them being like big. They pushers. grew now. They grew. Yeah, people. Right. I remember. Well, back in the day, you you wouldn't hear rap like I grew up on a lot of country and R and B and Mexican music, right? Right. And then you and my brothers and everybody that's how I got introduced right. to rap. Obviously, through my older brothers and their older friends, and uh, it did put me in a different tra trajectory. But it was like. In a good way, so I already knew. People are just trying to tell their stories. You know what I mean? People are just trying to tell your stories yeah. and how they felt. So how they felt, you know, and it does influence a lot of people. So I think. But that's you too, because you're a rapper. You're in that. I'm trying. And you can say like you can speak on while you do it. I want to so. provide for my family, and if it has to do with music, I love music. I love music so much, but I rather sing because how many R&B singers do you see get shot? Right, right. None, right. not a lot. So you be liking that? See you guys later. Uh, how, you don't see it. You see a lot of rappers get shot constantly. Why? Because that's the type of life they're living and that's the type of life they're portraying and that's what they're putting out there. Everything goes, what goes around comes around. God's not going to give you more than you can't deal with. But if you're out there robbing and shooting people and rapping about it, guess what's probably going to happen to you? Now, if you're yeah, singing yeah. about love and affection and you see what I'm saying, spreading positivity like Jason Mraz, I've never heard of anybody fighting Jason Mraz. So that's right. And no, I'm pulling out guns. You know what I mean? Jason Mar <laughs> on the cut. You know what I mean? Because he's not living that type of life. Right, and he doesn't right. want that type of life. So hey, so let me let me pick your brain on this real quick. I think this is a fun conversation. So between country, rap, and rock and roll, what, which ones do you think? Ha which one has the most influence on people? I know that's a that's a big that's a big country rap. Yeah, which one do you think the most influences the United States? What What do you think feels the uh, the people the people the most? <laughs> That's a fun question. It is. It is. If we were asking, if you were asking me this question ten years ago, all right, I would have said country. All right, okay. um, I would have said country um, because like Alan Jackson and George Strait and all the greats. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. All right. But then if we were talking like um, like 2014, all right then I would obviously, I would probably say like rock because it was like a punk rock stage that everyone was going through, remember? No, no, I think it was like 2010 to 2010. So it was based basically on the 90s and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, so and now I think rap, just like you said, rap has taken it, is here to stay now. It's no longer an abomination in music and people are actually trying to listen to it because people can relate. Yeah, so I think, I think that microphone um, in the music world is very important. And so you know that it's you, a strong tool, man. You know that it's a very strong tool. I mean, I mean look at this. Yeah, I mean uh, the 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 venting that people can do through that kind of music. You know what I mean? They have their silent thoughts as they're listening to music, and really what they're doing is with those silent thoughts is that they're meditating it in their heart, and then when some kind of trigger happens, you oh, know, man. they get oh, okay. You know, they, that's the only time I make music. Right. It's whenever I'm going through something, I'm like, I, I gotta go. Because so, I don't like telling people my problems. I don't like, right. I really don't like telling people my problems because I try to deal with everything. But you do. But I do. In a different way. In a different way. Yeah. So through music, I'll, I'll, I'll sing about how I'm feeling about somebody or something. So is it safe to say that when you listen to artists or when you listen to music, that the person that's singing it, that's just a clip of their life? That's not the overall picture of their life? No. No, it's not. It's not. Because some people, like Young Dolph, R.I.P. Young Dolph, he just passed away. All mm -hmm. right. He did live that life in the beginning, but along the way, he became a father. He became a philanthropist. 
know what I mean? He was an entrepreneur. He was taking care of his family. He, was, he just did it. They actually just did a to uh, turkey drive in his honor that he always does every year. Um, so along along the way, yeah, you do. We they do rap about doing this, this, and that. But after that, it's just it's That's not a small clip. Yeah, it's not a facade. It's, it's not. It's like it's it's um it's literally just their image. So these men, they'll have girls shaking. You know what I mean? In the background, dancing in the background, all right? But they're not touching them, and they have all these fake drugs and guns and all this stuff that are props. They're all props, and then right after that, they, they don't go home with these women. You guys may think that they Well, do. they may. Yeah, you, some of them do. You, you yeah, know, the ones you, that are single, yeah, yeah, yeah. And some are unfaithful, but a lot of these rappers go home, like Bootsy, go straight home to his family. Yeah. All right, yeah. I always wondered how, how the uh, the wives felt about that. Maybe they jump in there. A lot of them are in the, in the industry also, so they don't really, they, they understand that it's business, but some people do cross that line and cheat. Yeah, I think I think everybody understands that. Like, hey, this is, when you're a celebrity, just know that this might happen. Yeah, well, people don't want to hear your story until you're actually somebody, and a lot of time people aren't going to, uh, like, clickbait. You know how, like, there's a girl's big butt right there, boom. Oh, that gets people's attention, and that's yeah, why they yeah. do that to 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 catch the attention of the youth. Yeah. So they're 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 selling images of uh, of emotions that people you know really have in their heart. Yeah, and, and what uh, they go they're through. They're connecting. It's up to you but, what song you want to listen to. But I think my question is more tailored to um, what some of these artists are projecting isn't their overall lifestyle. Oh, definitely not. Yeah, I think I think that's what. If I they were to really know. selling bricks. Do you think they would be able to rap about it? Do you think they would be able to freely? No. Yeah. They, so, I, I think, I don't know. It's, it's a good conversation. It's a, it's it is. A, it's, it's a great conversation. It's a questionable but one. Kind of like, well, me and my friend actually just had this conversation. Yeah. We were like, because um, I don't know, there's a guy named Fetty Wap. Fetty, Fetty Wap, Fetty yeah, Wap yeah. just got caught with a bunch of drugs. And um, we haven't heard any music from him in a very long time. So, I guess what guess what he was doing? Yeah, yeah. He was, he was a kingpin. He was drug smuggling and doing all this stuff. Now he, but he doesn't. So like uh, Yo Gotti, his uh, record label group is called uh, what is it CMG, right? Cocaine Music Group, mm -hmm. all right, or Co um, French Montana. It's Coke Boys. Uh, you see what I'm saying? And they don't sell. Well, they used to. I'll say that. Yes, they used to. But they don't sell. They're not selling Coke anymore to fund their legitimate businesses because that could that could ultimately be their downfall later down the road. That's how a lot of these rappers are getting Rico charges. It's either. You portray the life that you used to live, all right, and keep your hands clean, and you don't lose it all, mm -hmm. or you try to dabble with both, and you lose it all in the yeah. process. I wonder if there's anybody who listens to to music and is like, "Oh man, when that person wrote that song, he was going through something," or "Oh man, when that person wrote that song," or if they just listen to music and like, "No, I'm going through this. I want to make sure that I feel what this is saying." So it's it's, it's weird. Like Sade, but you know, you, you wonder about things like that. I wonder about things like that too. Oh, yeah. Like, what's the story behind the song? You know, have you heard that song King of Sorrow? No, I haven't. My Sade? Oh my god, it's beautiful. Sade? I yeah. haven't heard Sade like forever. Yeah, it's beautiful and she talks about, um, she says, it starts off like, I'm crying everyone's tears. No? I am oh. the king of sorrow. Yeah, yeah, I know DMX yeah. had a crush on Sade. Oh, yeah, yeah. Bro, <laughs> she's, a, she's a woman. She's an actual woman, super yeah. wholesome. I mean, not too, not too quiet. Not too yeah. talkative. She, she has a she has a style that's that's just swap sophisticated. It's pretty cool. Very sophisticated. Very yeah, sophisticated. Like Smart. She's, she's, she's an intellectual. But she's that dead. song, man, I hear listen to that song every time I'm feeling super. And it's it's a sad song. It's a sad song, and I, it kind of it kind of makes me feel a little bit worse when I listen to it. But right after that, right after I'm done listening to it, it reminds me to get up and keep going. Yeah. So how would you caution people about? Um, because I know you're still going to do rap and stuff, and there's, you're going to yeah. have moments in life where you're going to want to talk about things and get it off your chest. But how would you caution the next man or the, the younger generation coming into the rap game? What would you tell them to be careful of? Not everybody has to be a trap rapper. You could be an R&B singer. You could be a rock dude. You could be in a rock band. You know, and it, honestly, if you want to get into, everyone wants to live this, uh, everyone wants to live a champagne lifestyle on a Miller High Life budget, all right? Okay. Everybody wants to ball out and feel like a rapper. Even the white guy construction dude, I'm telling you, the, you see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody, the paisa who sells drugs, everyone wants a big chain and nice cars and all yeah, this stuff. Yeah. Everybody wants to be, look like a rapper. But a lot of, a lot of times I try to tell the little homies, like, if you want to be a rapper, bro, that's cool. But... If you're just looking to dress and look like it, that's the type of lifestyle you want, you could be a videographer. You could be an engineer. You could be a producer. You could, you could literally, you could, you could be a rapper if you wanted to. But you, you could be a, uh, what is it, a lighting specialist. 
right. you could do it. You don't necessarily have to put yourself in that position to make that type of money. Yeah. And to live that I, type I, I think that's a good conversation for the younger people. Like you can do big things, but still keep your hands clean. Definitely. Like say you, you become a CEO, say you become a manager, say you become these different things. You can do big, big things and still keep your hands clean. Yes. You know, you do I, not need dirty money. You I, don't. It's not. I'm telling you sometimes. Yeah, bro. It's, yeah. it's great. I think that's important. It's so great. so wherever you're at and you're trying to jump the ladder, um, don't jump the ladder the wrong way. Mm -hmm. you, can, you can be clean at what you do when you don't, you're going to work for There's other ways in. I'm telling you, there's other ways in. You don't yeah. necessarily have to go the negative find, route. Find your gift, work with your gift, and do, do what you got to do. Yeah. And if your friends, I'm telling you, are not on the same, don't be afraid to, to, to veer left from your friends. If your friends aren't on the same thing as you, all right, and you really feel like you could benefit, uh, they, well, you could benefit and your family can benefit for what you're going to do. And if they're not real, if they're real friends, they'll accept that. And if they don't want to accept that, then unfortunately leave them in the past, bro, because you're going to end up in the same position as them. Why? They're going to let, you're going to let them drag you down. George Washington even said that, yeah, what is it? Show me your, the company you keep and I'll show you the man that you are or something yeah, like something that like along that, the lines yeah. of that. But yeah, if your I friends, he, I think he tweeted it. Yeah. No, I'm <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So if your friends are a bunch of idiots and you feel like if they're, they're doing a lot of bad things and you don't really want to do that and you want to go be a mechanical engineer, yeah. go do it. Yeah. Yeah. Don't let, let them do what they want to do. Go do what you want to do. No one's going to, real men will respect you for that. Yeah, yeah, I think that's an important conversation, especially uh, men, young men. Mm -hmm. We need trying young, to act we tough need, all the need, time. We need young men. Not to little boys. Step into the role. We need people to start taking care of the kids, too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm tired of that. Man, look at this guy. This guy came in with a. I, I thought I was underdressed. I came in with a T. He came in. He says I normally dress like this. Said, yeah, what? I try to. Yeah, because I noticed. I noticed, man, when I was younger, when I, around that time, actually. When I was like 19, 20, 21, I would wear my hat backwards. I would wear cargo pants. You know what I mean? Everything that a normal kid that age would wear, right? right, right. And I would get treated like a kid. They would be like, hey, son, hey, kid, hey, boy, um, youngster, excuse me. But when I started dressing like this and I started, instead of me pulling up in a, instead of me pulling up in a, in a Charger on 20s, all right, they'd be like, what's up, kid? All right. I would pull up in like a Jaguar or Mercedes or a Cadillac, something classy and sophisticated. And, and, they saw that. and I'm dressed like this. They actually take you seriously. They're not, he's yeah. not, he cares about his appearance. Well, he's not I some, pulled up to the house and yeah. I saw your little Jag parked out there, nice and polished and everything. Yeah. And I was like, whose house is this? Everybody <laughs> knows the car. Yeah. It's, I yeah, like, yeah. I like to have, you, you gotta work hard. You don't have to be a dope boy to have nice things, man. You gotta right. work hard. Right. You, you, you gotta work hard. hard. That was, that was from tax money. That was from tax money and for painting. Yeah, so, so that's yeah, everything's a stepping stone. My first car was, I had a 95 Cadillac DeVille, and then my second car, yeah, it was a nice one. It was nice, but that was when I was doing bad, like bad things. Yeah, yeah. The car after that that I got, my brother actually sold to me for like $600. It was a, a 96 Chevy Cavalier, dude, okay. and it was a bucket, green machine, man. I got it for $600. I sold that one. For a thousand dollars, and I saved another thousand, and I ended up buying a Lexus. Yeah, that's cool because you ended up learning how to how to do some mechanics on things. Yes, constantly I, through LLC, failure. You got your LLC. And I got my LLC. Yes, yes. through failure. That's exactly how. I, yes, yeah. because I, re I realized I'm actually not that bad at cars. So I was like, well, why not just get all my friends together and let's try to do something completely legitimate? Cool. A couple that's guys awesome. hanging around working on cars. What's that's up? cool. Nothing wrong with yeah, that. Yeah, nothing. But cops, it's crazy because now we'll have 10 or 20 cars outside, right? And the cops pull up and they're like, hey, what are you guys doing? And I try to ask what we're doing. And it's funny. I give them my card. I give them my card. I give them uh, my LLC. I, I go to the ACC, the Arizona uh, Corporation Commission online. Yeah, and yeah. I log into the portal there and I show them that we're in a legitimate business. And this is a legitimate business that we are running. Everyone here is a client and they're getting something done to their car. And they just leave us alone now. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. All right, let's kick it off with the last question, bro. Um, this is an important question, and it's uh, what's your thoughts about God? Where are you at today? What's your thoughts about God? I get very angry with God sometimes, and I do, ah, let's just say, I've had a lot of friends get murdered, and I've had a lot of people I had to say goodbye to. I yeah. Like, everyone loses an honor and stuff like that, you know? And I've gotten mad multiple times. I've even ripped up a Bible one time. Super mad, because something really bad happened to one of my friends, and I was like... How can you let this happen? I ended up going back and getting it, put it back together, and uh, I realized that that is life, and just because something bad happens doesn't mean you just try to end it, or you give up on faith, or you just say, F it, I'm gonna just become uh, an alcoholic and just throw your whole life away. You can't do that. Yeah. I've failed more times than I've succeeded, and I've learned everything through failure. I didn't learn how to change a tire until I popped it. 
Yeah, yeah. All right. I didn't. No one taught me how to do taxes until it was time to, to actually redeem my money. Until you know hey, what I'm saying. Here. No, yeah. <laughs> I feel like yeah. I feel and that's what sucks. I, that's one thing I actually thought. Let's not veer left either way. But God, I believe in God. God, there is a God. I mean, so my mom and dad made me. All right, and someone made them, but someone had to make where we're at. Yeah, yeah. All right, so I. This is what I, I so think. So do you think should, God is like a logical conversation? It's a logical conversation. And even if you don't believe in God, we all know right from wrong. We all know what lines not to cross. And that technically, I feel like um, if you guys want to accept it, that voice in the back of your head is God telling you. Like, you call it yourself. But yeah, that, that moral fiber that people say that they have, you know what I mean? That moral, those morals, all right? Those they're principles. In, yeah, those are principles are instilled in you by your family. But because they also know right from wrong. All right. And I feel like. Just keep your head above water, man. Try not to mess anybody over in the process, and you'll make your way there. Yeah, yeah. And hey, let me ask you a question. Uh, so, some people believe in evolution. Some people believe in God. Um, you know where I stand on that. Uh, but does moral can can morals come from evolution? No, no, no. Uh, does morals come from monkeys? No, I think more. more no, hell no. Morals come from actual <laughs> situations that you. You learn from, and, yeah. and then you tell your son like, "Hey, don't ever do this." Yeah. You know what I mean, that's a moral. Somebody had to put. Those Somebody words. had to put exactly. So I don't think. Yeah, I'm sorry, but everybody has a conscience, and it was put into us. I'm pretty sure. I I, I get into these conversations with my friends all the that's time. That's pretty they, deep, though. They don't want to talk about God at all. And I'm right, telling you, I'm like, bro, know, I'm like, yeah. even if there wasn't if there even if evolution was possible, I was like, even if it did, even if it did happen. Who's to say that God didn't create evolution? Who's to say that he didn't start that, which started this, which started that? Who's to say that he didn't snap his fingers and the Big Bang actually happened? Who's to say that, you know what I'm saying? Maybe we all just have it completely wrong. Maybe we're both right and it's all smashed together and everybody's just trying to Smash divide. Smashed together. So let me, let, me, uh, let me entertain that for a second. So think about, um, think about evolution in this sense. Uh, that is it possible to start off a certain way but end off completely different? I don't know. Like so, so like a transformer. So, so a say, say I make say I make my coffee and it's hot, but two hours I come back and it's completely cold. The original intentions was it to be hot and to be completely cold, but I think that's just the 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 natural laws that God gave us. I, I feel like I feel like everything we see is is a blueprint to something bigger. Yes. Yeah. I think, I think, you know, cause I can't see the winds, but it's there, but it's there. And I could sure feel the effect of it. Mm -hmm. I can't see God and everything all the time, we're but all... I know that I could feel that there's life in me. Yes. Well, physicists say that we're all energy, you know what I mean? Just big balls of energy. All right. What if that energy is God? What if that came from God? Right. What if like, literally, what if like the soul, what if the soul is actually real? People don't want to admit it. What if the soul is actually real and God created you as a soul? And as a being, and when you pass away, he takes back his soul if you deserve to go with him. Yeah. So I, I heard one, one preacher say, he's like, I believe in the Big Bang Theory. God spoke and bang. That's what I'm saying. I'm like, you don't know. Happened. Yeah, I'm like, you don't know. He could have just been like, you know what? Yeah. Boom, Big Bang. All right. Yeah. And, and everything, came. everything so and so Think forth. about light. When you turn on your light switch, light travels at the speed of 180 whatever it mm. is. It travels, it travels fast. I don't even know if I'm quoting that, how fast it travels. I don't even know. But imagine being in the beginning of time and God said, let there be light. You, then, would, you, would, you would disintegrate at the voice of light coming at you. How fast light travels, speed, yeah. you would just, you would blow up. I think that's a big bang right there. Like, so I think anything God does is a bang. Everything, people don't want to admit it, that every, but, but everything that is in the Bible is happening. People don't want to admit it. Or pay attention to or it. Or pay attention to it. They want to for a lot they're of trying reasons. to ignore it. They're trying to even the media, the uh, I don't want to say liberal media, but let's just say the media, they're literally trying to hide things that are happening on the whole other side of the world and people don't want to admit it and it sucks. Because yeah, I do feel I don't feel like we're in the we are in the end of our days, but I don't know how to explain it. We are in the end of our days. All right. If we don't change now and if if we don't restore some type of Empathy and morals back into society. I feel like we're just not gonna crumple. A bunch of rotten apples. Again. Personal battle. Yeah. So I think I think it's a. So I think people listening need to understand that it's a personal decision. It's a personal battle. 
Nobody's gonna fight it for you. You gotta, you gotta fight for it. You gotta believe in something, yeah. man. You gotta believe so, in something. So it's good, good conversation, bro. I really feel like, yeah, God, you gotta believe in something. Have some type of faith. Whether, but don't treat yourself like a god. You can have faith in yourself, but don't be like. Because every time I've always felt like, every time, and that's one thing I've learned. Every time I'm like, man, nothing could stop me. That, like that one song, nothing could stop me. I'm all the way up. I don't even listen to that song, bro. Because when I first listened to that song, I was on the freeway on my way to go do something bad. And I was like, I just bought my, I was like 21, I just bought a car and I was like, nothing could stop. Boom, <laughs> tire popped. God brought, brought me right back down and humbled me. Hey, hey, yeah. he gave you some of that humble pie. Yeah. There's, um, um, there's a thing out there that says, there's a scripture out there that says, he who thinks he stands, be careful lest he fall. And so I think that's important. There's the, the, a man plants his, uh, plants his steps, but it's God who actually, you know, gives the final say the final so, say so yeah. final direction and stuff. Roman Rhymes in the house. Thank, Thank you. you, my bro. Thank you guys for I having me. I appreciate you having, having coming Ricky, on. Ricky, man, so. I'm telling you. Minnesota Guy Community Network. Just, uh, let's talk about an interview. We'll get at you. Thank you. Minutes with God, minutes with God, community network. Jesus coming back, boy, I hope you're ready for it. These signs of the time, blind leading the blind, but the Savior of mine can wash your sins away. Repent right now, and you can be saved. Servants on the streets, like day after day. Preaching the word and displaying faith. Community network. Minutes with God, the devil he lie. We know Satan the fraud. Minutes with God, minutes with God, minutes with God. Hey. Minutes with God, minutes with God. Community network.